And then this last one, I was a little bit apprehensive about telling everybody about because I know there's actually quite a few out there that do it. What's happening, good people? So these types of videos usually elicit three responses. Let the fallout begin. There's people saying, you know, thank you for, uh, you know, doing what you're doing. Hip, hip. Those, whether my regular viewers or my first time people that are just tuning in, which I appreciate that. Well, hip, hip, hooray. The next one is, comes from actually two different sources. It's usually from somebody that is offended on behalf of a channel that might be doing these nefarious tactics. Kill him. Kill him. Or a person from that channel itself using a fake account. Kill him. Trying to negate the validity of these findings. And to those that are the loyal followers, I mean, that's pretty cool that their content resonates with you so much. But just so you know, you've been probably, you know, interacting with a whole bunch of bots and a fake account that the user has. And instead of being an army of 20,000, you might only be an army of 20. So in post, I found out that um, my vehicle rudely picked up my audio and didn't capture anything on the uh, camera. So to recap what I had said, as we're playing with the dogs out here, kind of inspired by someone that normally says animals at the end. Animals at the end. Uh, Hanning Poli, who kind of highlighted one of these um, nefarious tactics that I will highlight from his motivating words. We'll, um, we'll go with this. And since um, I also kind of been sitting on this for a while and was somewhat motivated by another fellow YouTuber. So buying subs, views and likes, it's not cool. Kind of doing it in the style of him. So many of you that have tuned in regularly know that my years of service to my community, I try to bring that into the guitar world itself. That's what the intention of this video is, is to not only help the YouTubers of now, but also the viewing audience and anybody else that might actually, you know, want on my channel someday. And they're seeing these channels that are doing these tactics out there and they feel like they're comparing themselves to these quote unquote successful channels that were putting out really bad content. Speaking with other creators, some small, some big, they felt a little discouraged from seeing these other channels out there doing it, not doing it well, thinking that their content isn't that great and they're not as growing as quick as these channels. And some of them have even have contemplated quitting before. So, at first, I wanted to highlight some really great content creators out there that are doing it the right way. They didn't put me up to this. If you know, if you've seen how I do videos like this, I always try to point out some really great people out there so we can get the word out. So the first one is across the pond, at least geographically for me. This awesome creator goes by the YouTube name, The Lamb. The Lamb does these really awesome live streams every Monday. Uh, 7 p.m. UK time, which conveniently is 2 p.m. on a Monday for me over here, Eastern Standard Time. These things are unbelievable. It's like a show in itself. It is probably the best interactive live stream. And if you're lucky enough, you'll get to see his balls drop. So if people haven't seen this before, you're wondering what's going on. If you're on YouTube, type, uh, we're not working on Twitch, unfortunately, Floss, no, I didn't wanna, they wanna push it too far. Ne next week, if this works, we'll, we'll. He has lasers, disco lights, the whole nine. And he pays for copywriting uh, so that YouTube doesn't, you know, copyright strike him. And he always gets copyright striked anyway. 
So he's pretty much shadow banned by YouTube. But the man has anywhere between 75 to 150 people tuning in on the regular. When you look at his live streams and you see the replay, he has a decent amount of numbers. So when you see, uh, and he only has, I think less than 2,000 subscribers at this time, and he should easily be 50,000 subscribers, if not more than that. He is an extremely talented musician that sings, plays to backing tracks, entertains you for an hour, two hours, however long it goes sometimes. And uh, he has a little interactive duck race where you just type in the word duck and you have a little race going on. Things run afoul with the duck race, but not often, very often. Um, I'm a 640, my duck appears to be wearing a bandana. You can win one of his cool little mugs. It's a good way to get the uh, community involved and the chat is just constantly flowing. And next up is a gentleman, Ben Coombs, Canucks with guitars. He's back over on this side of the globe, same continent, but different uh, country. Canadian, don't hold that against them. Oh, and Canada. But he does awesome live streams every Sunday and Monday. Oh, Canada. Uh, depending on which day, you either met with a cavalcade of superstars, YouTube personalities, or just a, a general panel of excellent musicians. Or you met with some really bad album covers that are so fun and get roasted. He does some really awesome gear reviews too. He's at less than 6,000 subscribers and should be beyond that. I've only found him a couple months ago, but his content is great. He's definitely somebody that shows you that he's doing it right. The man's an honest Wealth of knowledge, a straight shooter, puts out great content. He also does a really cool thing for his Patreon and his members where he does like regular sit downs in the Zoom, just like a round table where people just sit there, just shooting the breeze about guitars, life, anything whatsoever. And it just goes on for hours and it's just really, really cool. Get that. Punk. Yeah, you see? The next gentleman over here in the good US of A, you might have seen his thumbnails before, or when you clicked on the content, you were instantly bombarded by some super hyperactivity. Oh, the house payments due. I, I, yes, I know. And the electric will be shut off, but I'll have guitars. And once you start really watching his content, it is really, really awesome. He does budget reviews of gear, their quality reviews, they get less views than they really should. So you can tell he's not paying for them. He doesn't have souped up subs because he's chasing 10K subs by the end of the year. And the man definitely should already be at that. So if you're not watching the six string Stanger, you definitely need to. This guy is basically like that really cool uncle that gave you your first beer or joint or whatever, but he's really, really cool. He'd be like the family member that gave you his first guitar. When you look at his reviews and you see his most popular videos, they seem legitimate. Doesn't seem like he's bought anything to soup it up like some others. You definitely have to check him out. He's active in the guitar community. You probably see him in many different uh, live streams, just chat along, give him a look-see, hit that subscribe button on him, you won't regret it. All right, now I'll take you back to the rest of the video that was not captured in the truck. Sorry, I couldn't drink uh, coffee and drive at the same time. So I did a little walkabout thing. So the next uh, creator I like to highlight is uh, somebody who's a little bit higher in the subscriber count. I think he's holding at like 30, 31,000 subscribers. But he usually should have a uh, silver play button by now. The 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, he is goes by the name of uh, John Robson. And he does a regular live stream every Friday, uh, 5 p.m. UK time. Mm -hmm. 
So that's uh, noon Eastern Standard Time. Try to get out of the sun. It's a perfect opportunity to unwind after a long week, crack a beer with him, and just talk guitars. It's pretty cool. Uh, he has sometimes anywhere between 150 to 200 people in his live streams. He does regular videos on uh, simple lessons, just things about guitars too, um, albums, musicians. It's really a great time. Uh, and it just shows that word isn't getting out because he really should be super high in that subscriber count. And he's a genuinely a gentleman that will show you the fact of, you know, if somebody out there that's not doing it the right way, he has only 30,000 30, subscribers and he's has this many views. It's, it's a shame that YouTube doesn't actually really show people what they want. He also offers uh, two instructional books. My two books, Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist and the Blues Guitar Bible. That you could pick up. I haven't yet to do that, but plan on to eventually. So now on to the reason why you clicked on this video. Those evil tactics, the ways to spot them. And for those that you're thinking about creating channels yourselves, the reasons why you shouldn't even think about doing them. So the first tactic that is out there, not so easily to spot, is that you can actually buy a YouTube channel. Now, so someone, what they do is they basically create a channel. They probably boost it up with a bunch of videos on AI content, maybe doing some sort of reviews, not necessarily even in the guitar niche, just whatever, to get you to that point where anybody thinks that if you can get past 1,000 subscribers and the watch hours, you get monetized, that every video you're gonna make is gonna be a gold mine. So people buy these channels, I don't even know. Never looked into it to see how much they actually cost, but it's not gonna be subscribers that are even into your content. And it's just a, it's a, it's a fail from the start. So save your hard earned money and don't even do it. One of the ways that you possibly could spot this is really more from a creator standpoint and we'll get to that in a little bit but for a regular viewer you just have to go and youtube gives you these tools you go to their channel click on their videos and then sort by their oldest if they have 10,000 subscribers and their videos came out six months ago probably bullshit mine seven months ago if you go and look at mine and I have approaching 650 subscribers. So that kind of shows you what's more, more legitimate. Unless their content is completely awesome, or it's a celebrity, or somebody that's like a big name YouTube artist, although otherwise most likely bought the channel. You could also go to their about section and see how old the channel is. If it was created in 2020 and they have seven videos, probably something that was bought could not necessarily be true because if you signed up for YouTube and you're using your own personal account, it may be when you know you started instead of actually starting a channel account. The next is actually purchasing views. And this is what uh, the video that Henning Poli put out was about and also the one that Steve Cassidy did. And I'll try to link to their videos, put it up in the cards. Um, if I can link to Henning's at the end, because I'd much rather you hear it from somebody that is a professional youtuber been in it for a while has a lot of subscribers on why it is completely bad for you to buy views buying views and subs just inflates your numbers doesn't give you the good content and the way to spot that really is that you just again you have the tools to do it go and sort by popular video what is their most popular video it might be a Fender guitar because they partnered with Fender when they hit that 100,000 subscriber mark and they sent them a guitar. And if they're putting out crappy content and they're not getting the views and those subs are fake and those views are fake, they're going to pay for the views to keep that thing going. And Henning does a much better way of explaining it. And he goes to all the ins and outs of why it's not good for you as a viewer, not good 
for the creator themselves, not good for the rest of the creator community, as well as it's damaging to the, the company and they don't even know it's happening. Some YouTubers actually charge a really high fee for these reviews. And then what they basically do is they take half that money and buy views. So it looks like to the company that they're making money. Sorry, I try to get this out of the sun. So the next best way to also check out too is see what other kind of products they are. Do they have like a Joyo amp that made like 75,000 views? It could be possible, but you know what? Go and vet it. Check out the same product from other successful YouTubers and see how well they're doing. And then click on his content and it's probably gonna be a clue that it's not real. Sorry, it's probably easier to do this on a not such sunny day or in the UK or Scotland where the sun never shines. Yeah, so it's very, very easy. If you see a video that has 100,000 views and you click on it, you start watching it for a little bit and you think to yourself, why am I watching this thing? Most likely those views were bought. And then keep on scrolling down through and you'll see, you'll notice that maybe some of the, the views aren't there. Like you go from 100,000 down to 50,000 and then you're going down to like 2,000, 3,000. If you have 100,000 subscribers out there, at least 10% of your audience is gonna watch within the first, I would say week tops. So you should never ever have a video that has less than 10,000 views on it if you have 100,000 subscribers. And you could basically say that for somebody that has 50,000 or 25,000. And that's just their viewers alone. There's people that don't subscribe that are gonna watch these videos too. You could also check out their latest videos too. And you see that they're hovering around 200, 300 views. That just means that they probably haven't bought the views yet on it, or it's not a product they partner with and they don't care how many views it gets. And then this last one, I was a little bit apprehensive about telling everybody about because I know there's actually quite a few out there that do it. Um, some that didn't even probably need to do it. And some of them, their channel solely is thriving because of it. And that is reaction videos. And I don't mean reaction videos like the Corey Feldman solo or this whole Ken Tamplin tampon thing. I don't know. Not really sure what that's about. I don't really click on that. There's actually a hack where you actually take pretty much advantage of an entire culture, basically. And there's a lot of YouTubers out there um, from foreign countries that have loyal followings. They have, you know, two, three, four million subscribers. And you do a reaction video on them. And you basically play their video and you watch it and you just say, oh, huh, that person was really good. I like that, you know, the, the riff that they played. That beat was pretty good. And you just talk over it for a little bit. And because you have their name in the title, you praising them come from a foreign country that's very appreciative of their talent and they just subscribe to you right away. Now, this is bad advice for many, many, many reasons. Now you have inflated numbers of people that don't even care about your content that aren't gonna interact with you. And if they do, a lot of times it comes up and it says translate to English. And if you're not from that speaking country, a lot of people are gonna think that you don't have a loyal fan base and it ultimately tanks your channel. The way that happens is that YouTube sees that you have 50,000 subscribers. Say you did a bunch of these videos and 25,000 subscribers came from this type of act. When you push out a video and of your 25,000 subscribers now that are legitimate, not all of them always watch your content. So now it looks like if half of those see your content, it only shows it to about a quarter of the people and YouTube kind of just shelves your video because they're thinking that, hey, your subscribers don't want to watch it, so why should we push it out to somebody else? So unfortunately for them, this is probably even worse than buying views and subs because these are actually people that are interacting on YouTube and probably won't be taking off 
of your subscriber rules for not interacting with YouTube or eventually they find out that it's a bot and you delete the bot farm and you lose. That's why sometimes you see as a creator that you lose some type of count for no reason. And the way to basically, for people that aren't creators, that don't have the tools that I'm gonna mention in a little bit, basically just sort by their most popular and see what their most popular video is. I did forget to mention previously that if you have a channel that has a lot of subscribers and the views aren't really there, you know, 2,500 on this, you know, product and maybe 3,000 on this product and maybe only 500 on a pedal. Pedals, they seem like they always do horrible. Look again, see what their oldest content is. Sometimes they'll leave it up and it actually might have been that they did something that they didn't know that they were doing that was wrong for themselves. And they might have actually had a following from doing a you know, YouTube channel, let's say on sewing. I don't know, I just pick some random topic. But say they got 100,000 subscribers from sewing and now they decided, hey, I wanna do something in the guitar world. So now they start doing guitars and maybe Maybe a quarter of those people that were into sewing also also play guitar. I don't know, it could happen. So they are getting views from their subscribers, but the people never unsubscribe from that channel. And it's kind of cool that they leave it up there so that you know it's there, but it's really also hurting themselves in a sense too. So when you click on the video, you think, wow, the content is actually really there. They kind of did them a disservice by not just creating a new channel themselves and starting fresh. Everybody does want to hit that magic number and have a great success, but if you do it the right way, it's gonna definitely pay out in the long run. So this one is for the creators out there that purchase those tools that help you create channels. And Steve, I don't know how you do this with constantly trying to keep the sun out. But um, yeah, um, back to uh, the, the subs. So when you look at the graphs, they should kind of flow kind of nicely. Occasionally, if you do something that's kind of viral, you might have a little bit of a spike. So you as a creator with these tools, and you could buy them too as a, um, you know, just a viewer if you wanted to, so you could vet your own channels. But if someone buys views, you'll see a spike in their views. And with a spike in views should come an increase in subs. And sometimes that doesn't happen. You'll see that that spike happens in the views and the subs plateau, or they might even go down. Also, when you see someone that does a reaction video, you may see a spike in subs. And with this one in particular that I use, you could actually take the date that is currently showing since published see when that was published, find out around what time that was actually put up. So you can go back and see that this one was like two years ago and you'll go and you'll see what that video was. You could probably maybe sort by popular, it might show up, but it might not. I found one actually that the person hid the video. So you wouldn't even know that it was there. Most likely probably a reaction video. I just didn't want it to be out there on their, on their channel. Also, if their views, spike they go down they spike and they go down then that probably means that they were buying views as well and same with the subscriber count if you see a subscriber count that shoots right up probably did a reaction video maybe bought subs if they could and what happens is usually after a year the views don't really generate anything anyway so they may hide the video because it's not making them any money anymore. And this way they look like they're an honest channel. And if you were coming to this video for me to point fingers, you guys know by now that I don't do that. And it's not to stir up controversy and, you know, they know who they are, they're doing it. You could easily spot it. And again, if the content resonates with you and you like it and these people are doing it, then that's, that's, that's fine. Just realize that they're hurting you in the long run from getting the content that you really want to see because I'll paraphrase it a little bit, but really please go check out uh, Henning's video on this. 
But basically, the company has oh so much money to spend on advertisement, on who to give products to. And if they're giving it to this guy that does crappy reviews, it may you may never see it because you're not going to click on his stuff because you know that he does poor reviews. But for Company X, they see that they get 75,000 views that they paid for. And basically, he's charging the company for that review. And he knows that he could take half his money, put it to that review, and just a revolving door of, of money. So it's really about the integrity of it all. And usually, after these types of videos that I do, I see a, a drop in my subscriber count. So if you see that, people, it wasn't because I bought views or I boosted this. It's usually because whatever. But I'm not here chasing numbers. I'm here to help all the YouTubers out there, the community, the people watching, and the future to not do this type of stuff. You've all been a fantastic audience. And as always, stay tuned.